Hello everyone, Charles Wallenfried back again with another watch video and this is the state of my collection 2017. This most likely is the last time I do a video such as this. I hope you enjoy it and uh, let's go ahead and get into it. First thing I want to uh, talk about is my uh, work watches or my beater watches. I'm not going to go in uh, deep detail about these watches or actually I'm not going to go in detail at all about these watches. If you're interested in hearing more about the watches that I'm referring to in my collection, please check out my videos from 2015 and 2016. I uh, go in better or actually detail about those watches and what they mean to me, what they are and so on and so forth. I want to uh, do this video and highlight the watches that, not to say, not because they're so more, far more expensive, just the ones that make me feel really good about myself. And um, uh, some of these watches really, uh, really are special to me and I want to talk about them. So let's go ahead and start with the Ball Fireman NECC. When I see this watch on my, uh, on my, uh, winder a lot of times i look at it it's like what why are you there you're you're the first one on the chopping block if i have to get rid of any watches you're the first to go but when i put it on i change my mind i really i like this watch i like it a lot um this watch is robust it's somewhat heavy but it makes me feel this, especially with this clasp, and that's what uh, ball watches have. They have a clasp that lets you know that that's, it's there. It's there. It's on your wrist. You feel very safe, very safe when you have this on. But yeah, like I said, when I put this on, uh, I'm glad I have it. I am glad I have it. Next up is the Hamilton X Mach. Hamilton khaki X mock. Gotta remember the khaki part. All right, this is a Pilot's Chronograph. Um, like Ball, this is an American brand and it really invokes the American personality. This is a busy watch, but I think it was very well executed. This was a gift uh, my wife gave me one year for my birthday or I picked out for my birthday. It's a nice chronograph, flight chronograph, that pilot's chronograph. I love a uh, rotating bezel, the in internal rotating bezel. I love to play with those. Guys, I can't do any, hardly anything that this watch can probably calculate with. I am not a pilot. I haven't done any work in aeronautics. So I have no idea how to use this slide rule and uh, I still like having it. I just like having it. All right, let's go on to the next watch. Mule Glass Hute Marinus. I'm big on the whole thing. I'm big on the whole experience. And I like a good box. This is a very well done box. That lacquered wood, nice red color. Nice, very nicely done. Now this watch, is one of the first watches that caught my eye at Little Treasury Jewelers in Gambrels, Maryland. Now I know every time I mention them, I sound like a commercial, but they d deserve to get that treatment from me. None of this would happen. Absolutely none of this could happen to this point without them. And I'm truly, truly thankful for what they have done with me and for me. This watch makes me feel like I am a true watch collector. I know what a good watch is all about. And I look past watches that were in this price range and decided on this watch because this was the absolute best watch I could buy at that time. And I'm proud of having that. Along with that, this watch is probably the most comfortable watch I've ever worn. This bracelet is phenomenal very very comfortable 
And this is not a small watch, but it's just well balanced. And uh, the way the, way the uh, links are set up makes it really nice. Next up is the Longjing Hydro Conquest. This watch made me feel like I was finally on the team. I finally was part of the group. I was finally part of the crowd. This is my first Swiss watch. The first watch that came from a, a storied brand such as Longjing. This watch is the first time I negotiated in a store and got a great deal that I didn't pay retail. This is the oldest watch of this, co the, this collection or this collection of the, my nicer watches as I call them. It's the oldest one and it has staying power. It absolutely has staying power. Every time I look at it, it's like almost the first time. It's like the first time, almost, not the same. And believe it or not, this is the least expensive of all the watches you're gonna see today that I'm highlighting. Again, this is the watch that put me over. I never had a watch that cost this much until this Long G. I'm so happy I have it. And like I said before, if I ever get rid of it, it will be replaced by another Long G. Up next, Omega Seamaster 300. Now, before I get started, as I said before, I'm big on boxes, and this is a big, beautiful box. This is a uh, this is very similar to the Moulet Glass Hute, but much bigger. And you know what else I like to do? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This is what I like to do. Yeah, I love that smell. Like some people like a new car smell. Some people like the new shoe smell. I like the new watch smell. Even though this watch is just a year old, it's still maintain, I still maintain the, the scent it, because of this, uh, this box. I think this is the most beautiful watch I have. I did like the original wave pattern of the Omega Seamaster 300s, but I think this black lacquer dial is better. Along with the, uh, the way the indices, the circle indices have a little bit of dome to them and the ceramic bezel, you can wear the, this watch anywhere, guys. Anywhere, and it's fitting. It's fitting any time of situation. It is utilita utilitarian and elegant at the same time. Damn, I love this watch. All right, second to last, we have the Breitling Chronomat Evolution. This was the watch, guys. This was the watch. This is the watch that put me in a place I always wanted to be. The place was a feeling of accomplishment. For those of you who know me very well, not many of you do, I am terribly, terribly full of bad luck. I am the most unluckiest person I've ever been around. You do not, you don't want to stand next to me if you ever go to a casino. Forget going to casino with me. You don't want to ever stand next to me. And if you do, you bet against me. Years and years of trying really hard. I have years and years of failures. Or years and years of second place. I've worked real hard for years and come in second and third place over and over and over again. This watch makes me feel as if I finally came in first place. I finally accomplished the task at hand. I've told the story before and I want to tell you again. Years ago, I was in the, the, uh, a jewelry store with my wife and I told my wife, one day I want to have a Breitling. Though this is the third Breitling I've owned. I, this one is special. And this is one I was thinking of. But when I said that in the store, out loud in the jewelry store, the lady, the associate, she laughed at me. She laughed as if you will never own that watch. 
that's not what prom prompted me to get that watch or motivated me to get that watch. I just think back to that situation because I knew I was going to get that watch. I absolutely knew I was going to work hard to get that watch. And I have it. My Tudor Fast Rider Black Shield and the white indices. The Tudor Fast Rider Black Shield comes in different indice colors. This is the white indices. I think this is the best one and uh, it can go with anything. Now with this watch, it, it's, a very, it's very similar to the Breitling in the sense of accomplishment, a watch I've been eyeing for a long time. But more so, this watch is a representative of what I am. This watch is Charles Wallingford. This watch is uh, traditional without being traditional. This watch is original, but it borrows from its predecessors. This watch is anti-establishment, but it's born out of the establishment. This watch is from a company that's well known, but the watch is not well known. When I look at this watch, I see all the things that I see in my other watches. If I had to get rid of every single watch, this watch would stay. This watch is accomplishment. This watch is a watch collector's watch. This is everything that Charles Wallingford is. At the end of these videos, I always end with what watches I would like to have later. Watches that I would like to have um, in the future. I'm not sure when the next watch is gonna come. I'm very content with my collection. There is a watch I would like to have in the uh, very near future or more possible, though I still won't press myself to get it. Uh, Longing Master Collection, retrograde. I love to have a, a complicated watch like that. I think that would really help that collection. And of course, of course, guys, I need a dress watch. All these watches are sport watches. I need a dress watch. So that would be the most like most likely watch in my sights that I will get in the near future. And the near future probably is maybe two or three years from now. Um, I usually get a new watch every year. That's not going to happen. I'm probably not going to get a new watch for a long time. And I may not get into a new watch ever again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me as a whole. This may be most likely the last time I do a watch video, period. I have enjoyed the time I've had with you guys. And if you're new to Charles Wallingford, I have quite a few videos for you to check out. Uh, watch reviews, um, watch events, uh, uh, travel, dealing with luxury watches. I've done, I do it all. I do it all, guys. So I have a lot of videos in my catalog you can check out. I'm Charles Wallingford, and this and all those other watches are how I spent my money.